What is up you amazing hackers, I hope you're all doing well today. So I want to take the time today to discuss a vulnerability that I found recently while bug bounty hunting of course and it's called client side template injection. I want to cover this vulnerability because I think there's not enough research being done into this topic and I really want to advise you guys to look into this much much deeper than I can explain in this couple of minutes. And I really, really would recommend that you go do your own research and look into this yourself because there really isn't a whole lot of research being done. There are a few excellent articles by Port Swigger, which I'll link in the description below. But let's get right into it, shall we? Now, first things first, where the hell is my head? Okay, very simple. I'm moving. I have no idea where I put my head. I'll find it soon. We'll get those heads back. Now onto the topic of the video, you guys probably already know server-side template injection. A lot of people know server-side template injection or SSTI, I have a couple of videos on that as well. And SSTI is like a vulnerability because some, some programs, some targets, they use a templating engine on the server. Now what does that mean? It means for example if I put two curly brackets and 7x7, seven that the server will evaluate the expression between the curly brackets and give me the result, so 49 in this case. Of course you can do a whole lot of other commands with that, but that's the basic gist of it, it goes much much deeper than that. Now server-side template injection is something very very similar, which is why you might confuse it with server-side template injection the first time you guys see it. That's also why I recently rep uh, got like a video out that said I found an SSTI but I didn't report it. Guess what guys, it wasn't an SSTI, it was a client-side template injection. Now the biggest difference is the context in which you are. So server-side template injection is going to execute on the server. It's pretty much going to give you remote code execution on that server, which is why it's a huge vulnerability of course. But of course you also have your client-side template injection and that happens on the client, name says it all. Um, now the big difference is that the client is sort of like a cross-site scripting attack because you're going to be executing your code on the client's machine and not on the server's machine. There are again a whole lot of things you can do with it. The most common one is cross-site scripting which is why I named it but you have access to the whole context. So whatever is going on, you can execute it, you can go to the environment variables, and this happens in templating uh, engines like AngularJS, you have Vue.js, um, and this is a really big vulnerability, I believe, because those, those templating engines, they are being used more and more, but you don't see a whole lot of people actually checking for, the, for that. Now, the good news is when you're fuzzing, you don't have to change your fuzzing string from SSTI. You can just use your SSTI string. At least that's what I think you can do because I'm not 100% sure. Again, not enough research is being done into this topic in my opinion. So I hope I can spark your interest a little bit to do your own research into this. It's a very, very, um, very interesting topic to me because it describes Two vulnerabilities that you can check like um, you can check your cross-site scripting attack factors but you can also check your context and there's I have no idea what what's possible with uh, CSTI you know there are a whole lot of range of options that you can go and research now as for SSTI itself um, when you're testing for SSTI same as for CSTI it's, I always recommend, so this is going to be a little bit more methodology, I really recommend that you try and insert your fuzzing string as soon as you can. So the first input field that you see, let's say you're registering an account, try and fuzz that already. Try and fuzz those parameters. Why do I say this? Because often these types of uh, vulnerabilities, they don't arise from within one program. So I'm going to give you guys an example. Say I want to generate an invoice. That invoice is going to take some of my account details. Now when I enter my account details and I save and I go back to my account details, my SSDI or CSDI might not get executed because that's kind of the expected uh, thing to do with those values. And it's probably checked very heavily. Now when I want to generate my invoice, I'm going to get that data. So when I get that data, it's going to be processed by a different module and that's often where the vulnerabilities arise. Those 
integration points, I'll call them, they are not tested properly and not tested thoroughly enough, in my opinion. So that's where we come in. We just enter our fuzzing strings, use your program like normal, and you'll have to notice when that fuzzing string actually gets converted into your expression, so uh, into the value of your expression. So if you use 7 times 7 as a fuzzing string, you have to be really, really aware that you actually look for 49 on, on some of the pages. You know, if your name is 7 times 7, so curly bracket, curly bracket, 7 times 7, if that's what your name is, you'll have to look in the name field on the invoice to see if it actually resolved into 49. So thank you guys very much for listening. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, I would really appreciate a like. And if you haven't subscribed already, I put out much more content like this. So I would highly recommend you guys to subscribe. Thank you guys very much for watching. I love you all from the bottom of my heart. Uncle Web says, peace out. Bye.